9th February 1947 Maya Illusion The same devotee who questioned Bhagavan yesterday again asked him this afternoon about illusion, Maya. Swami, all the innumerable varieties of things that appear to the human mind to be real are mere Maya, illusion, aren't they? Will the illusion disappear if they are all discarded? Bhagavan replied, Illusion will continue to appear as illusion so long as the idea that oneself and Ishwara are two different entities persists. When once that illusion is discarded and the individual realizes that he is Ishwara, he will understand that Maya is not something distinct and separate. Ishwara exists without and distinct from illusion but there is no illusion without Ishwara. Therefore, that illusion changes into pure illusion, doesn't it? asked the questioner. Bhagavan replied, Yes, it amounts to that. Unless the individual self is existent, how can one realize Ishwara? There is no self unless the illusion is there. When once the individual realizes who he is, the evil effects that is, doshas of illusion do not affect him. Call it pure illusion or anything else you like. That is the essential thing. Somebody else took up the topic and asked. They say that the jiva is subject to the evil effects of illusion, such as limited vision and knowledge, whereas Ishwara has all pervading vision and knowledge and such other characteristics and that Jiva and Ishwara become one and identical if the individual discards his limited vision and knowledge and such other characteristics usually attached to him. But should not Ishwara also discard his particular characteristics such as all-pervading vision and knowledge? They too are illusions, aren't they? Is that your doubt? First, discard your limited vision and such like characteristics, and then it will be time enough to think of Ishwara's all-pervading vision, knowledge, etc. First, get rid of your limited knowledge. Why do you worry about Ishwara? He will look after himself. Has he not got as much capacity as we have? Why should we worry? whether he possesses the all-pervading vision and knowledge or not. It is indeed a great thing if we can take care of ourselves. The questioner asked again, But first of all, we must find a guru who can give us sufficient practice and thereby enable us to get rid of these gunas, mustn't we? If we have the earnestness to get rid of these qualities, can we not find a guru? We must first have the desire to get rid of them. When once we have this, the Guru will himself come, searching for us, or he will somehow manage to draw us to himself. The Guru will always be on the alert and keep an eye on us. Ishwara himself will show us the Guru. Who else will look after the welfare of the children except the Father himself? He is always with us surrounding us. He protects us as a bird protects its eggs by hatching them under the shelter of its wings. But we must have wholehearted faith in Him, said Bhagavan. A devotee by name Shankaramma, who is generally afraid of asking Bhagavan questions, said quietly on hearing these words, But Swamiji, Guru's Upadesha, instruction, is necessary for sadhana, isn't it? Bhagavan replied, Oh, is that so? But that upadesha is being given every day. Those who are in need of it may have it. Others present there said, But Bhagavan must bless us that we may be enabled to receive the instructions. That is our prayer. The blessing is always there replied Bhagavan.